Happy Sabbath. Good morning. Good afternoon from wherever you are watching us from. Uh, we are glad again to be here uh, to do our lesson discussion. And again, I'm joined by my wonderful people here to just delve through this lesson. They are going to give us their, uh, their study, what they have understood through this book. Um, before we just get into anything, I'd like that we pray. Just please pray for us. Heavenly Father, we ask for your wisdom. We plead for your Holy Spirit that you will guide us as we look into your word to experience your truth and beyond experience to have the power to live it out. I pray that you will guide us till the end is our prayer in Jesus' holy name. Amen, amen. Thank you so much. So before we go any further, I'll just ask again that just you start us by the introduction. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, happy Sabbath. My name is Jess Rono. I'm excited to be here. Karibu Sana. Yes? <laughs> yes. Uh, happy Sabbath. My name is uh, Japheth. I'm happy to be here. Japheth Rono. Karibu Sana. Yes. <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, my name is Ntsongo Rafael Namisoa. Uh, glad to be here. And I'm Romana Pio. I'm happy to be leading the discussion. And just to take us back, last week we started our new quarter and we started with Jesus win and Satan loses. And it's just paramount that we remind ourselves that this quarter we are studying the three cosmic messages or the three angels' messages. It's one and the same thing. So this week we are going to move to something more interesting, more uh, eye-opening. So the first chap the first lesson was on Revelation chapter 12. Then this week we we'll move to Revelation chapter 14. I don't know. Ideally, I just thought that we should start from from Revelation chapter one. <laughs> but I think as we go on with the study, we'll learn why we had to start with Revelation 12, then 14. So a moment of destiny. Um, I don't know to my panel, when someone tells you destiny, what do you understand by just the word destiny? Uh, anyone can just answer. <laughs> uh, so for me, destiny is like um, mm. that point upon which so many consequences mm. um, uh, result from and mm. it is like a, a, a turning point. Okay. Itself. So yeah. it's a very unique, but maybe like the independence of a country, All right. maybe it's the founding of a company, mm. I don't know, the coming up of a new idea mm. in a moment of destiny. It's, yeah. it's so unique. Okay, turning point, a unique moment. Jess, what do you think? Um, I think I just understand destiny to mm. mean the culmination of one's life mm -hmm. purpose and yeah, choices yeah. Um, and so a moment of destiny is anything that actually leads to to that that mm -hmm. culmination the mm -hmm. final um the final fulfillment of of someone's um life purpose mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and the no, yeah see culmination yes, yes Raphael. what do you yeah, think I about think destiny I, I agree with uh, jess mm -hmm. yeah, i think destiny mm -hmm. is a, is, a, is your final destination okay the <laughs> summation of all the decisions mm. that you've made, mm. all those things, they lead up, uh, I think it, it's your destiny now, in terms of uh, the results of everything that you've done, the efforts and all mm. those, mm. Where, where they eventually lead you. Mm. Uh, I think that's what people refer to as destiny. Okay, so I, I, I'll, I'll maybe look at destiny from this point of view. I, when I was in primary school, in high school, uh, teachers, and especially my father, my dad will tell me that, you know, you are together in this class, you are all together, but there's a day you need to live alone. So for me, he usually, when I talk about destiny, I usually remember my father's words. Like, destiny is you individually. Like, it's not all of us. It's not corporate. Uh, a it's not a decision that we make corporate. We might end up at the same place, yes, but... It comes from you made that decision on your own, you know. So that's how I view destiny. But we are going to look at a moment of destiny according to the Bible. And we are going to delve in the book of Revelation again, chapter 14. And I'll read uh, the 
key text is which is coming from Revelation chapter 14, verse 14 and 15, New King James Version. It says, Then I looked and behold a white cloud, and on the cloud sat one like the Son of Man, having on his head a, gro- a golden crown, and his, in his hand a sharp sickle, and another angel come out, came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him who sat on the cloud, Thrust in your sickle and reap, for the time has come for you to reap. For the harvest on earth is ripe. This, the last line, tells you that a moment of destiny is here. Something needs to happen. But do you know, God does just... God doesn't just do anything without alerting his children, without telling his friend what his plan plans are. He does not just do things because he's God, now I'm going to do things on my own. You know, sometimes in our lives we do things on our own without even telling our friends, our close people. We just we wake up and we've made the decision. But that's not God. That's, at least that's not how he does his things. Before the flood, God told Noah that, you know, a flood is going to come, right? And this is what you need to do. And I also just remember before destroying Sodom and Gomorrah, the same thing happened. And this time, what is God doing? Because destiny is coming. We have to make decisions. What is God, God doing in regards to that? That's why we have the three angels' message. And this three angels' message is final message of mercy, a call that leads us to us from trusting in our own righteousness to trusting the righteousness of Jesus to justify us, to sanctify us, and the end of time to glorify us. So, and I'll ask Japheth, what does eternal choices have to do with destiny, like the Monday part? Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, it's uh, what I talked about with regard to a turning point, mm. uh, a po- uh, like a point of inflection. That, that that is so different from every other point that came before it. Mm-hmm. You know, um, uh, let's say once you graduate mm-hmm. uh, a s- school and you're now out into the world, mm-hmm. you know, your university or whatever it is, uh, uh, th- it's so different. Every other day after is so different from every other day that came before. Yeah. Because uh, the environment is unique. The choice, <laughs> the new choices you make are unique. Mm-hmm. Uh, even the people you interact with are unique. Mm-hmm. And that applies, I said, even on a national level, on a personal level. Mm-hmm. And in this case, at a global level, there shall come a point in time when uh, 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 all of our choices will coalesce to a particular turning point. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, that is what we find when we study uh, uh, the topic of Jesus Christ's return. In the book of Matthew chapter 24, reading in verse 14, mm-hmm. we find a description of um, Jesus Christ just as he is about to live. Uh, it's Matthew chapter... Matthew chapter 24 from verse 14 it says and the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all the nations and then the end shall come Mm. and then that moment of destiny will be and again we find in Matthew chapter 14 verse 6 we we see an angel flying in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach unto those who are dwelling upon the earth unto every nation kindred tongue and people and uh, 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 you, you find uh, uh, that is a description of that particular point at which all of our consequences come together. Mm. That decision that you'll have to make for or against Jesus mm. Christ. That mm. decision you'll have to make to follow Christ or not to follow Christ. Uh, uh, Christ says that shall be the, the final turning point. Mm-hmm. That shall be the final uh, uh, point after which... Uh, uh, no other choices matter. You know, mm. we can make choices with regard to what we'll eat, etc., mm. etc. Mm. But the choice that we have with regard to Jesus Christ is the final choice. Mm. That's the like the, um, it. It invalidates every other choice that mm. came before, and it is the uh, foundation of every other decision and every other moment that mm. comes after. Mm. And uh, it, and all that is sparked by the preaching of this everlasting gospel. The promise that Jesus Christ gave to all of His people mm-hmm. was that the gospel would go throughout all the world Mm -hmm. and then the end would come and that's why when we accept this that uh, we have to make a choice with regard to this gospel Mm. Uh, 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 it it doesn't say that everyone will receive the gospel Mm -hmm. it says everyone will hear that message yes that means that everyone will have an opportunity Mm -hmm. to make a choice for or against Mm -hmm. the gospel Mm -hmm. god calls us right now to listen and accept that message mm. and uh, we know that god has given great provision for us mm. if we make a decision for for mm. christ in the book of john chapter 14 verse 16 mm. it says that jesus christ has promised that he will pray to send a comforter um, a, a helper 
to help us in these difficult times. It says, I will pray the Father mm. and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, verse 17, mm. whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him and he dwelleth with you mm. and he shall be in you. So right now, as God has a desire to shape our characters, he has a desire for us to listen to that message mm. that shall go to all the world and make our choice now for time or for eternity. Thank you, Japheth. I'd just like to pick what Japheth has said and uh, ask you, Raphael. Japheth has told us that the message will be preached. It does not mean that we, all of us will accept it. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at the thief on the cross. There are two thieves. One gets the opportunity to go to heaven and the other one is condemned and i'm looking at our christian lives we've lived all our lives as a child the gospel has been preached probably you grew up in a home that um everybody goes to church your father your mother tried to instill this teachings of christ into your life but for some reason you do not accept these teachings but we, the Bible says that we will find those that are undeserving, those that we think are undeserving to go to heaven in heaven. So I'm looking at this and I'm wondering. So there are those people who are going to get last minute and there are those that will get lost last minute. What, what's your comment on that? Mm. I think, uh, I think uh, the beauty of the judgment mm. is uh, that even before the judgment we as Christians have an understanding of who the judge is. Yes. And um, our understanding of God is that uh, he is just mm -hmm. and uh, he, he, whatever his ruling will be, mm. uh, I think we, you can never, there is no higher power than that and, mm. uh, and uh, it's the purest form of justice that any, mm. any creature can receive. Mm. And so with that in mind, I believe that all who will make it to heaven mm. will have deserved to be in heaven. Amen. There will Amen. be no favoritism and... Mm. Uh, and that's the same thing that, that God says, you know, um, it says the heart is deceit, deceit, mm. deceitful uh, mm. uh, beyond all things. I think that one of the greatest things that can, that can ever deceive a person is their mm. heart, mm. the way you are led by your inclination. But God says, I search the heart. Amen. So mm. with that in mind, I know uh, there's something that God saw on the, that thief on the cross mm. in his heart mm. that uh, warranted mm. heaven being opened mm. for them. Mm. One thing you'll notice that the opportunity was open to both of them. Mm. Both, both thieves, Christ mm. uh, was at the center of them, yeah. equidistant, I would, mm. I would hope. Mm. And so they both had, but the way they responded, their hearts were, were different. Mm. And one opened up his heart to Christ mm. and made an eternal choice. Mm. The other one similarly made an eternal choice, mm. but uh, uh, against, uh, against, against life. And so um, I believe God knows our hearts and mm. God understands uh, the various circumstances and situations that uh, have mm. led us mm. and he gives each and every single one of us mm. an opportunity before eventually our time uh, runs out to, mm. to to interact with the gospel mm. um, that said uh, will everybody who gets to heaven have had the gospel mm. will they uh, have known God mm -hmm. the Bible tells us that that is not true that there are some people who in heaven will be asking what are these wounds mm -hmm. in your hands what are these uh, and, and mm -hmm. they'll be told that story mm -hmm. so that goes again to tell us that god uh, god god sees the hearts of, of men and women and mm -hmm. uh, and we are judged by our works mm -hmm. in terms of um, the light that we had mm -hmm. at that point at the mm -hmm. point when we met our death mm -hmm. had we lived up uh, to, to 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 all the truth that we know Scripture tells us that God has put a measure of faith in each and every single one mm. of us. Mm. It may not uh, be the same as Japheth's uh, knowledge of, mm. uh, of good and bad. Yeah. James mm. also expounds mm. uh, and says, he who knows uh, to do good and does it not, mm. to him it is sin. Mm. You know, to the Adventist mind then, sin can be very broad, mm. you know, with the understanding of Scripture and, uh, and how the commandment is exceedingly broad, as David says. But to each and every single one of us, there are certain things um, that God has put in us. Even when you are, when, when you are arguing for God mm. from an anthropo, uh, anthropic um, point of view, mm. you find in almost all cultures there are certain things, whether they are they are they are secular or religious, mm. certain things that are that are almost uh, cut across, like respect for elders, mm. whether uh, these people are godly or not, uh, whether they they are exactly. they are cannibals. Mm. There are certain things that uh, to a certain extent God has put some measure of godliness in mm. each and every single one of us. Mm. And so at the end, uh, at the judge judgment it will be did we live up to all the truth that we were exposed to yes, and yes. so with that i know whatever judgment happens whoever i will meet in heaven mm. uh, will have merited to be there amen mm. amen so there's in the light and in the knowledge that first the gospel has to be preached 
to every nation, to every tongue, to every tribe before Christ can come back, before this moment of destiny can come, before the culmination of the earth events. And I'm asking, how are we supposed to live? Are we supposed to keep saying that? Ah, I'll, I'll, just, I'll change like the thief of the cross. If he made it, I'll make it. <laughs> I'll change like Rahab. You know, Rahab's uh, moment of destiny changes drastically just from one decision, you know. So are we supposed to wait? I know the gospel, so I can do other things as I wait. How are we supposed to live? Um, y- you know, the Bible says that Today, if you will hear his voice, mm. harden not your hearts. Yes. That is in the book of Hebrews um, chapter 4. Mm. And I, I do think that many of us keep delaying that decision mm-hmm. and thinking that they will make it tomorrow. But the reason why the Bible says harden not your hearts is because of the nature of sin. Mm. As, you make one, as you commit one action, as you make one choice, mm. it, it makes the next choice much easier. Mm. And your heart becomes so hardened in sin that it is harder for you to make a different choice if you had been making wrong choices. Mm-hmm. That to realize that every decision we make ends up cementing mm. our character, mm-hmm. ends up um, making up um, the person of who we are. Mm. You know, someone said that every decision we make is it is casting a vote in the great controversy. Mm. That as we learned last week, that you cannot remain neutral yes. um, in this great controversy. Mm. There is a choice. There is Christ and there is Satan. And there is a war between them. And every choice is casting a vote in that war. It's mm. putting a ballot box and saying, I am standing on this side or on that other side. And those de- those decisions end up summing up, as we said, our our destiny, mm-hmm. our, our, our life completely. Mm-hmm. One small decision over another small decision. It's waking up today and saying, maybe I will stop drinking alcohol tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me not stop today. But tomorrow it will be much harder mm-hmm. because you, you have just made, made your brain be so strengthened in that decision you have mm-hmm. been making mm-hmm. every choice today in that small thing does matter mm-hmm. amen thank you Jess. Jess has told us that you can't be that you own you cannot afford to be lukewarm you are either on the right or on the wrong so joy just again back to you on the monday part the sign of mine returns you know i've noticed it is a human character to want to be identified. I'll say the first thing that I like identifying myself with. If I find people the same height as me, <laughs> I always feel just so comfortable. Like, oh, we are short people, you know. Uh, you go to a place where I'll use the commonest example. I went to Alliance. <laughs> so it's a whole congregation of, I went, like, we want to get the identity. We want to identify ourselves. And Jesus Christ comes, and so many instances, he calls himself the son of mine. Why do you think Jesus had this, um, why did he used to call himself the son of mine? Was Jesus like us, wanting to identify by tribe, you know, you go to a place and sometimes unconsciously you're just looking for people who are of your tribe. You're looking for people who are Seventh-day Adventists like you. It makes you feel like, I don't know, for me it makes me feel like, okay, to Kowengi, you know, such things. Why does Jesus see the need of identifying himself as the son of mine? You know, you know when you're in trouble mm. and, and you want someone to sympathize with you, mm-hmm you will feel more confident to know that the person sympathizing with you Mm -hmm. has walked on the same path. Mm -hmm. Most of the time when you when you're in trouble and then someone who has never walked on the same path you have walked and they come to <laughs> encourage you, you, you never take it seriously. Exactly. Or you, you imagine ah, you, you haven't gone through what I have you gone don't through. Understand. So you don't. And it is a need. It mm. is a human need mm. for us to want sympathy mm. and for us to be able to relate with people um, who, who have walked that journey. And, and God 
in his loving nature, you know, condescends. And it's not actually even before Christ comes as the son of man. In the mm. Old Testament, whenever there was a need to be addressed, mm. Christ came, mm. appeared, and he identified himself according to that need. Mm. Okay. When he was um, appearing to um, Gideon just mm. before he goes to war, mm. you know, Gideon is preparing to go and fight. Mm -hmm. And by that time, what Gideon needs is not someone who will tell him, by the way, I am also a good cook. <laughs> you know, he wants a warrior. Mm -hmm. And so Christ appears mm -hmm. and tells him, I am the captain mm -hmm. of the... Actually, this is Joshua, not Gideon. Joshua, Joshua, Joshua chapter 6. Joshua, actually, Joshua yeah. chapter 6, mm -hmm. yes. Jo he, says, he comes and appears and says, I am the captain of the Lord host. Amen. Of, of. So mm -hmm. the person who is act he's, he's confident the person who is leading this war mm -hmm. is a warrior. Is mm -hmm. a warrior in heaven. I'm mm -hmm. the one who commands the armies in heaven. Mm -hmm. and, and, and time and again, Christ wants to come so close to humanity to, and to tell you that the need that you have right now, I have walked through it. Mm -hmm. In the book of um, Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14, mm -hmm. it says that he... God himself, mm. he became flesh. Christ himself became flesh. Mm. He was made like one of us. So that you understand that when we are saying that the choices mm. that we are making today mm. have eternal consequences and that someone is going to judge, the comfort is this. the person who will appear is a person who has worked on this earth, mm -hmm. who has taken your flesh, mm -hmm. who, who, who has been made like one of you. You know, he says that I, 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 these are my brethren and I'm not my brethren. They are my brother. Why? Because he was made like one of us. Mm -hmm. And so when Christ, it is so comforting to know that when, the, when Christ describes his second coming, then he, 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 he reminds us that I'm the son of man. Mm -hmm. Yes, I will appear as king, but let me tell you, the person who is coming mm -hmm. is one like you. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it just gives us a, a lot of encouragement mm -hmm. not to be fearful. Amen. Not to be fearful because mm -hmm. if, if, if it is a man coming, if it is someone who will sympathize with me, mm -hmm. then there is hope for me. I mm -hmm. shouldn't shake at the second coming. I should actually look forward to it mm -hmm. because a man like me will mm -hmm. appear. There will be sympathies with mm. the troubles I've gone through. Mm. He will understand. Yesterday we were um, at a place somewhere and then immediately we left the church. Mm. Someone ran to us mm. um, and said, I heard you had been introduced and I heard you guys are calendars. Mm. And, and I'm also a Kalenji. <laughs> I come from Nandi. And she was so excited. Yeah. And even though we cannot speak the, the Kalenji language fluently, <laughs> we, were, we, were, we were there encouraging her. We were telling her, oh yeah, we're also Kalenji. Mm. We come from this region. Because she was just excited to know yeah. that there are, there are ministers of the word of God in her place exactly. who come from her area. Mm. So that if she has a need, she understands, oh, these people know mm. what I have been through exactly. or what I go through. What mm. is our area like mm. and when the son of man shall appear Amen. as God references uh, as he references himself the son of man in Mark chapter 16 verse 42 that you will see the son of man mm. sitting at the right hand of power mm. and coming with the clouds of heaven mm. Christ's intention is to remind you that one like you is the one who is who is coming back mm. to judge you he's the one who is coming back to receive you mm. as his own yeah thank you so the first time we see the sun i just love before i go there i just love the fact that you say that this lady is hoping that you understand mm. that if there are cultural things that she's facing she hopes she's hoping that you guys actually do mm. what understand you might actually not even understand but there's just that comfort mm. that i am together with this one so that's really profound and Japheth, in this light like just has told us that jesus is identifying himself as son of man as the captain to joshua you know and then he in this light how we know that Christ was sinless, yet he lived in this world. And from what I gather is that he lived in Nazareth, and Nazareth was not the best of environment for him to grow up. But yet he overcame. Yes. So what hope does that give you as a Christian? I think uh, it's the hope that um, uh, Christ went through everything that we could possibly go through, mm -hmm. um, even to a much uh, 
Exactly. So, like, um, for instance, when he was tempted in Matthew chapter 4, mm. um, he was tempted mm. uh, on appetite at a level that no one can ever be tempted, you know? Mm. Uh, like me, uh, yeah, if I'm in the wilderness, it's not that I'll be tempted to turn a stone to bread. You know, that's <laughs> not, uh, you know, mm. uh, uh, but Christ was tempted at that deep, 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 mm. deep, deep level. Mm. Uh, so now that we know that Christ has suffered uh, far, uh, uh, as a human being fully, mm. far, far more than we could possibly suffer, and yet he endured and he overcame. That mm. means that uh, the power that he, he, he used because he was filled with the Holy Spirit mm. is the same power that you and I have. Mm. And Christ is freely able to offer that. Secondly, mm. we know that he is interceding for us. That, we, that means you know somebody who, has, who understands our position mm. is interceding with, w for us. Mm. We are uh, weak uh, uh, mortals. We fail. But we know that when we ask God for, for, for help, he will give us uh, this help. In Hebrews chapter 4, we are told just that. Uh, Hebrews chapter 4, reading from verse 14 to uh, 16, it says, Seeing that we have a great high priest mm. that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, mm. let us hold fast our profession. Mm. Why? For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Mm. We have not. Mm. That means we do have a high priest who was touched with the feelings of our, of our weaknesses mm -hmm. and, and was pointed, uh, was uh, in all points tempted like as we are and yet was without sin. Mm. Therefore, uh, verse 16, let us boldly come to the throne of grace. That mm. means knowing that Jesus Christ um, went through all this mm. and he succeeded. Mm. We can now come boldly and ask for, for mm. grace and mercy, mm. ask for help. Because we're asking not somebody who, is an, who, who, is, who has no understanding of us, mm. but he feels and understands our situation in a most intimate sense. Amen. So that we can be very bold as we're going to him. Yeah. So that way we sing that song and say that the angels will fold their wings when they hear the stories that we... They, they do not know the redemption story. Amen. Amen. So Christ knows the redemption story, but and even us, but the angels do not know. So they will fold their wings. I love that song. Zafeth, uh, sorry, Zafeth, no, Raphael, Zafeth, Raphael keeps confusing me. <laughs> Raphael, so we are here and we see the sign of mine coming, going through everything. But the sign of mine is yet to return for his second coming. And if you go to the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 27, it says, The sign of mine will come to reward each according to their works. Matthew, chapter 24, 27 to 30, it again tells us that Christ will come in his glory. Matthew 25 again, 31 to 32. Now he will come to take us home. What do this verse? This, the first time Christ comes, but this time the sign of mine is coming with a reward. We, differently. How, what, is, what is the light of, what light does this, do these verses give you? All right. Mm, okay. Mm. Um. I think uh, just maybe to borrow a thought from uh, from what you've said and what Jeff had said, mm. in that uh, Christ, I think the lesson says uh, he refers to himself almost 83 times in scripture mm. as a son of man, mm -hmm. almost like a title that he is uh, he's really proud of. Mm. You know, mm. we live in this world in mm. which people are really uh, very big on titles. You mm. know, so and so PhD, yeah. so and so <laughs> fellow of the Royal College of this and that. You know. <laughs> Et cetera, et cetera, and we look for all these things. Uh, yeah. But uh, the, the, one of the greatest things that Christ, uh, Christ bears, he, he calls, he refers to himself mm. as a son of man, mm. as a son of man, and uh, and it's, uh, it's 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 very interesting. It's very interesting. Um, I think one of the things also that's significant about leadership is uh, um, you want a leader who is in tune mm. with the common man, exactly. and not only just the the highs of the common man. By the sufferings of the common mm -hmm. man, who understands the nitty gritties, the the difficulties that mm. people that people are going through, and uh, beyond that, we also want a leader who is able to mm. solve your problems. Exactly. You know, to empathize is 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 good. Of course, a problem shared is a problem half solved, but there's a, another half that mm -hmm. needs to be sorted. Mm -hmm. But you see, in Christ, one who not only identifies but mm -hmm. also has the ability and the power mm -hmm. to solve and mm -hmm. to and to set things right. And so, um, the picture that uh, Matthew sixteen twenty seven, Matthew twenty four, uh, verse twenty seven and verse thirty, mm -hmm. as well as Matthew twenty five, verse thirty one and thirty two, which you are referring to, it speaks to us of 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 of, of a savior who identifies with man's sufferings, mm -hmm. has experiential knowledge mm -hmm. of man's suffering, and who is coming now mm -hmm. with a reward. 
for all those who have been faithful. Yes. And then perhaps on the, on the question of, uh, of, of whether angels will fold their wings, uh, that usually I find to be a bit debatable because <laughs> this war started in heaven. Yeah. And they actually lost some of their friends <laughs> to the other side. Uh -huh. And so I believe angels from the beginning, are f f f to them in fact the great controversy has lasted longer that, it has, that it, had asked, it, had, it has lasted on earth. But mm. then maybe uh, in Swahili we, we say Uhuru wa, uh, wa, wa msani, uh, <laughs> alie tunga uo wimbo. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, I believe uh, the great controversy has really shaken. Uh, mm. It shook heaven and it shook here on earth. And so uh, perhaps they will sing even loudest, uh, Hosanna. Having God having been justified because they made they made the right decision to stick with God because mm. the difference between the angels that stayed with God is that their love for God was greater than their love for Lucifer, mm. vis -a -vis. Because uh, the devil, to a certain extent, uh, he made uh, certain he made points which they had never thought about. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he he had made aspersions that cast aspersions on the character of God and 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 in essence, the great controversy. God is the one who's actually on trial. Mm. His God who is on trial, and um, and uh, through the Son of Man, as we shall see, uh, indeed, uh, he's proven to be mm. to be right. And so okay. uh, mm -hmm. that would be maybe my contribution if I was to take a jab at uh, the previous uh, All uh, discussion. All right. Yeah. So, Dao, I still, I'm still coming back to you on the Tuesday yes. part, but I'm really grateful for the contributions that we are making so far. The heavenly judgment, I'm looking at it from the verse that we read of Revelation chapter 14. Mm -hmm. Our memory text, 14 verse 14. The last part say, Thrust in your sickle and reap, for the time has come for you to do what? To reap, for the harvest on, of the earth is ripe. This verse does not say the good harvest is ripe. This verse does not say that the bad harvest is ripe. It just says the good harvest is ripe. The harvest is ripe, sorry. And I'm asking... What does it mean that the harvest is fully ripe? What does the angel mean when he says to the Son of Man, thrust in your sickle and reap, for the time has come for you to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. In the, according to, I just want you to relate those questions in answering us and teaching us through the Tuesday part, the heavenly judgment. Uh, indeed. Um, um, Revelation 14 is, 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 a, is a very... It's a very potent, uh, mm -hmm. a potent chapter, I believe. Um, but for most of us, maybe we, as Adventists, uh, or maybe from the circles of Adventists that I've been exposed to, we tend to da, uh, to to play around with around 44,000, and then mm -hmm. from there uh, we, we don't really follow. Everything. But um, <laughs> there's very symbolic language there, and I think even as we as we move towards uh, the Thursday beat, we mm -hmm. shall see more about the same, about the harvest, and and about how the seed. But uh, to simply, in summary form, because we're going to come to it, um, to simply answer your question mm -hmm. is that um, uh, the harvest here is the harvest of character. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the people on the earth have made their decision and they have mm -hmm. made their choices. And so it is now time for Christ to, to sort of bring in the sheaves, mm -hmm. to recompense and to give everybody in accordance with uh, the choices uh, that they have made. You know, and so um, in uh, looking at uh, the heavenly judgment, it, it tells us, um, uh, we are reminded to read uh, Revelation 14 and verse 14, mm -hmm. and Acts verse 1 to uh, chapter 1, verse 9 to 11. And it speaks about the second coming of Christ, mm -hmm. in essence. Mm -hmm. <coughs> second coming of Christ is uh, symbolic that uh, the probation mm -hmm. of man mm -hmm. has ended. And that everybody, uh, beginning from Adam until the very end, has made their choices, they have made their decisions mm -hmm. in re with regard to whether they are for, for God or against him. Mm -hmm. And so Revelation 14 and verse 14, the imagery that is, that is, that is, that is given there is imagery that is, uh, that is, that is not foreign to us. It's, it's imagery that was given to the disciples when they saw Christ uh, ascending in mm -hmm. Acts chapter 1. Nice. In fact, the angel says, uh, appears and tells them, this same Jesus, mm -hmm. this same Jesus whom you see, shall in like manner come back mm. again a second time. And mm. so Revelation 14 and verse 13 uh, reiterates the same message of the angels and it says, Then I looked and behold a white cloud and sitting on the cloud was one like the sun, like a son of man, once again that, that word, having a golden crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Mm. We see Christ coming now um, having been crowned and, um, and uh, he's receiving, uh, he has what? A sharp sickle mm. in his hand. 
And um, in Daniel chapter 7 and verse uh, 9 to 10, it tells us also of uh, sort of like the coronation of Christ. Mm. Where in Revelation 14 and verse 14, he's coming, he has a golden crown and he has a, he has a sickle. And in Revelation, in, in Daniel, we, the same imagery is, 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 is confirmed to us. Maybe if I was to read, it says, And I kept looking until thrones were set up, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. Mm. His vesture was like white snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. That's interesting, and uh, maybe to interject, the mm. Bible says we are actually made in his image and likeness. <laughs> you can see it's, it talks about hair, mm. it talks about his seat, you know, mm. uh, and so um, it, it is almost literal. And uh, it says his vesture was like white snow and his hair of his, the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was ablaze with flames, its wheels were a burning fire. A river of fire was flowing and coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands were attending him and myriads upon myriads were standing before him. Mm -hmm. The, the court sat and the books were opened. It sets to us the scene of the heavenly judgment mm. that God is, is sitting and the angels are there like witnesses mm. and also attendants in the court. Mm -hmm. And the Bible records the books were open. Okay. This is the scene of the Father. Mm. Uh, the Father, uh, verse 9 to 10. Mm. The books were open. And uh, we will see and we know that in heaven there are books of records yes. uh, mm. that all the things that we, we, we do, all our, our activities, as one writer says, are recorded with terrible exactness. <laughs> and so um, the, from these books then we can be judged. Though we are not present in heaven, mm. but there is a record of us, mm. a, a, an exact record of, mm. our, of, of, of our actions. And so from these books the judgment is made. Whether we, whether we, whether it, it speaks of of us positively or negatively, uh, it is for us to introspect and to make uh, the necessary changes. But the books are opened and, and the judgment is set. Mm -hmm. And then soon after, after all these things are done, the Bible uh, in the book of Daniel chapter thirteen and to, uh, chapter um, rather, Daniel seven verse thirteen and fourteen, mm -hmm. it says the following. And I kept looking in the night visions. Daniel continues and says, and behold, with the clouds of heaven. One like a son of man mm. came again, mm. and he came up to the ancient of days, this is the father, and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion, glory, and a kingdom, mm. that all the peoples and nations and men of every language might serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, one which shall not be destroyed. And so we see Christ receiving the crown. Mm. Christ receiving the crown. And in the imagery of Revelation 14, he now comes down with a sickle mm. to reap the harvest of the mm. earth, to mm. give to everyone according as to his works shall be. Mm. Because, um, in essence, it, it, it tells us of a time um, in which we are all meeting with our destiny. Mm -hmm. Now, as a, as a lesson, uh, uh, the lesson uh, for the week has, has, has rightly captured a time with destiny, mm. uh, a meeting with destiny. And so... It tells us of this time when Christ shall come. This is a, 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 an image of the second coming and Christ coming to harvest. Christ mm -hmm. coming to harvest. So maybe the question for each and every single one of us mm -hmm. is um, to think about um, the judgment. Mm -hmm. How is our lives? How mm -hmm. are our lives? Uh, what are the seeds that we are planting? Mm -hmm. And when the, eventually when the, the time of the harvest shall come because the world will not continue mm -hmm. infinitely. Mm -hmm. And probation, in as much as perhaps we are fascinated with the, the close of probation, uh, in terms of the global scale, mm. you know, people, are, people ask themselves, what, what would be the sign of the global close of probation? Mm. But each and every single day, probation closes for individuals. Anybody, anybody who meets with their death, mm. at some point before they died, mm. the door of probation closed. Mm. Because uh, beyond, uh, beyond, after death, we can't really pray for you. Exactly. You know, we can't correct uh, the mistakes that mm. you made. And so it calls for us to, to see, even if maybe... We are not living, you may not think we are living in, the, in, the, in those uh, immediate uh, end times and end days. Then the question is, uh, what about, uh, we may not make it to the end of the earth, mm -hmm. but we, do, we are not assured as to how long we will live. Yeah, and so we need to look at our lives and introspect and see that perhaps my individual uh, door of mercy or of probation can close. Mm. And, uh, and, and, and let's not focus on the, on, on the global uh, close of probation and all those uh, end time events and introspect now. Mm. And I uh, ask uh, myself, when perhaps my name comes before uh, the book, before the judge, what will be said mm. in the heavenly judgment mm. about myself? Mm. What are the records of my actions? Mm. Am I being kind to my neighbors? Am I loving? Mm. Am I doing those things that Christ said, you know, 
um, I was poor. Mm. Uh, I didn't have food. Did you give me food? Uh, I was in hospital. Mm. I was in prison. Mm. See, those are some of the things that, mm. that we need to, to, to ask ourselves mm. when, uh, when, when our names are mentioned in heaven uh, uh, and in which books will our names be found. Thank you. I'll just pick up from where you left and ask Jess, you know, Christ is here and now judgment is happening. Perhaps this should have been the first question I should have asked, but uh, it's no harm we can still ask. What are the perceptions of judgment that you've grown up knowing? Because for me, the judgment that I know, if I say it, you people will. <laughs> what does judgment, what perception of judgment do you have? I remember when I was young, um, I think about six, I think I was about six or seven years old. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. think just um, the millennium. Mm -hmm. I, I was so young, but I do remember because of how much fear I had within me. <laughs> and we were moving, I think, to, to, uh, moving to the year 2000, and mm -hmm. everyone believed that Jesus is coming He's back. Coming. Mm -hmm. And I remember my family used to sit around um, the fire and talk about it and, you know, discuss how he's going to come back on, on the, when, they, when you are turning on to the new year. People sold a lot of things. People were honestly ready for the second coming. <laughs> People gave up their property. Mm. They believed Jesus was coming back. And every time this story used to be discussed, mm. my stomach could churn. I felt <laughs> like I was not ready for the second coming. coming okay. And actually, several times I would, I would, I would have fainting spells. Mm -hmm. Like during those conversations, I would mm -hmm. just, I would, f I would, I would faint. I, I would go into almost like an epileptic state. Mm -hmm. um, every single time those mm -hmm. conversations would come mm -hmm. up, and I was filled with so much fear. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it is, it, for me, growing up, it's just knowing that there is someone who's going to come and judge me. But I felt like I. I was not ready, not mm -hmm. because I'm a bad person, mm -hmm. but because I just didn't understand the standard of this judgment. Mm -hmm. And I, I just felt that God was too holy and too high above me that I will just be thrown down into hell, mm -hmm. especially with this misconception of the ideas of hell. Mm -hmm. The judgment and the second coming of Christ mm -hmm. super scared me mm -hmm. to, 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 to a state of being sick for many years in my, in mm -hmm. my childhood. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember growing up, a bit older, maybe when I was 12 years, I kept having a lot of these dreams that Jesus Christ was coming mm -hmm. and I, that he was splitting people. And sometimes I would find myself on the wrong, right side, depending on how my day was. And other days I would find myself on the right side. Mm -hmm. And it was always scary. It looked dark. It looked like a bad time. Mm -hmm. Th that's how I, that's my perception of judgment when okay. I was young. Mm -hmm. But now I definitely, it's, re it's really changed because we've just talked about the sign of mine and you You've rightly told us that Christ identifies with every trial that we've gone through. And Zafet, I'm just going to ask um, this fear that Jess is talking about. Are we to live with that fear that, you know, Christ is coming? You know, they tell us that he's going to play a TV, a video of all your character. Now, this is like someone scrutinizing your character. I, I keep seeing this, that you've been elected or appointed into a public office, and now you, you, you have to kind of come out and say, this is how much I own. This is like everything about your life is suddenly out in the light. And most of us don't like it. At least we just love living private silent lives. But there's a time that is coming that that private silent life is not going to, <laughs> to be there again. And I'm asking you, should that give us fear? You know, I know Jess has grown up and she has new perceptions, but there's someone else who still has that fear. Please speak to that person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I think if you have this fear, mm -hmm. um, uh, the fear comes from understanding half of the truth. Yes. Uh, the half of mm. the truth is mm. that yes, mm. um, Jesus Christ is is uh, is, 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 is is coming. Mm. Yes, uh, the law exists. Yes, we are sinners, and yes, the wages of sin is death. Mm -hmm. Those are biblical statements. Mm. In fact, some of them are specific word for word Bible verses. Mm -hmm. But that is one half. The other half is that if you lay, in fact, uh, I can read it in First John chapter one, 
verse 9. Mm. It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful, faithful and, and just mm-hmm. to forgive us our mm-hmm. sins mm-hmm. and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. And because of that verse, mm-hmm. and because of so many other texts in the scripture, we can have faith. Amen. And we can simply ha- have that simple childlike trust mm-hmm. that I have placed myself inside the hands of Christ. Me, I'm okay. Amen. As long as I am walking in the light, mm. we are told in verse 7 of the same book, First John chapter 1, verse 7, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, mm-hmm. then we have fellowship one with one another, and the blood of Jesus, Jesus Christ cleanses us from all our sins. So you Amen. can just, as long as we are walking with Jesus Christ, mm. as long as we are abiding in Christ, mm. there is nothing at all, not even the, in fact, it is joy, mm. because now we know that our elder brother, Jesus Christ, is coming, we are going to meet our father. Amen. In, very shortly. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. That's really comforting that we have nothing to fear. We are with Christ. Christ has already done it. Christ has already walked so that we don't have to crawl through that road. And Japheth in still on the judgment part, we have been judged and is the, the victor's crown. Please take us through that. Uh, great. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. So the victor's crown that is being spoken of is found in Revelation chapter 14, mm. verse 14. Mm. We are told, um, Revelation 14, verse 14, it says, And I looked and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud sat one like the Son of Man, having on his head mm. a golden crown, mm-hmm. and in his hand a sharp sickle. Mm. Now the word for crown there is Stephanos, mm. which means it is uh, that victor's crown that is worn mm. at that particular time mm. during the Olympics. Mm. I know we have the Olympics today, but we are actually inheriting um, a, a system and a tradition that was among the Greeks when the Greek city states would send uh, mm-hmm. competitors who would go and compete in the Olympics mm-hmm. and the winner would get that crown um, uh, um, of like a um, uh, green it's like um, a plant or something like mm-hmm. that and that was a crown of a victor it wasn't a crown of a king mm-hmm. although Jesus has the crown of the king he also has this victor's crown mm-hmm. and it is the same crown that you and I should be seeking mm-hmm. after day by day and, and how do we achieve this victor's crown? Uh, as we said pre- uh, throughout this whole uh, study, it is not by uh, 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 exerting our individual effort. By mm-hmm. no one's works individually mm-hmm. shall be saved. Mm-hmm. It is by laying claim on, on the power of Jesus Christ. In the book of Mark chapter 4, verse 26 to 29, Mark 4, 26 to 29, we have a simple parable mm-hmm. on, on a, 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 a seed that is planted. And Christ is using that as a reference to understand how people become more and more like Jesus mm-hmm. every single day. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Mark chapter 4, 26 to 29, it says, So is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast a seed into the ground, mm-hmm. and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up, he knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth the fruit of, of herself, first the blade, and then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. And when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. The mm-hmm. harvest is come. So at that point, uh, 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 that is a simple illustration of mm-hmm. the Christian experience. Mm-hmm. That uh, your experience begins like a seed, mm-hmm. and then the seed grows, first mm-hmm. the blade, mm-hmm. and then the ear, mm-hmm. afterwards the full corn in the ear. Mm-hmm. Christ is describing the process of a tree mm-hmm. that is growing mm-hmm. from the seed uh, to full maturity. Mm-hmm. And that is uh, uh, our experience as we're walking with Jesus Christ, mm. as we're going with, uh, as, as we're struggling through back and forth, mm. you see at each point that plant is perfect. Mm. At every single point it is perfect, mm-hmm. you know, um, at the point when it is uh, a small seedling, it doesn't have fruit, mm. but you don't expect that. Mm. And, and as it grows, you expect it to have some, some small leaves that are growing into larger leaves, the, the ear, uh, uh, um, and then the full corn in the ear. Mm. So you have the, that expectation that we have of day by day victory. Uh, in Jesus Christ, conquering new challenges, becoming Amen. more like Jesus Christ. Mm. And ultimately, mm. um, once the harvest comes, because mm. we are told there's a harvest, that is when we receive the victor's crown. Mm. And that is the hope and expectation that all of us should have. Amen. That as long as we are walking with Jesus Christ mm. day by day and growing with Jesus Christ day by day, when Christ calls us uh, to himself, either in death or at the second coming, we can, we can have a 100% faith that mm. me, I've walked with Jesus Christ, and mm-hmm. Christ is my savior, he is mm. my dear friend, and now I'm going to meet him, and I will receive that victor's crown. Thank you. And I'll just pick up from where I've left, like, our Christian life is like I said, it grows past the blood, evil, polio, polio, like every day is a new growth. And I'm looking at a seed that you have to water it, you know. So, um, just taking up from the growth of seed, Jess, Every seed produces a harvest. It can be a good harvest or a bad harvest. And that is our Thursday study. What do you, 
what was your study lo looking like? What can you share with us from your study of Thursday? Um, I think the Bible says um, in the book of Galatians chapter 5 mm. um, that these are the, the works of the flesh. The f as we continue um, making these different choices that we spoke of, mm. then certain fruits will be produced. Mm -hmm. And these are the works. And it continues to say, you know, um, idolatry, witch witchcraft. Those mm. are the works of sin. Mm -hmm. And then Paul um, goes down and contrast with the works of um, the spirit mm -hmm. and that if we submit to the spirit of God again there is something that's going to be produced mm -hmm. and this um, and he speaks about the fruit of the Holy uh, of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. that at the end of the day the culmination of what we are talking about exactly. the moment of destiny, destiny. produces something mm -hmm. and it is going to be a healthy fruit that we can take up mm -hmm. or it's going to be a fruit that we cannot consume. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, Christ, um, using an example of a vineyard, says that he puts everything, mm -hmm. he puts everything, he works on it, he exactly. works on the vineyard mm -hmm. and he looks for fruit at the very mm -hmm. end of the day. Mm -hmm. in, 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 that is the book of Isaiah chapter 5, five mm -hmm. that he looks for fruit. And, and sometimes, even after putting in all effort, the fruit that is produced is evil fruit mm. and sometimes he gets good fruit mm -hmm. and so today no, let me tell you if you <coughs> if you are thinking that maybe i do not have power christ is investing all that he can for your salvation exactly. and at the end of the day he's mm. looking for fruit mm. in your life <laughs> and the, des the desire that we have is that when he comes looking and seeking for fruit he will find fruit he will find a good fruit Amen. but if you continue making evil choices mm. then christ will come mm. to the farm that he's been working on mm. and find an evil fruit and mm. those are the people that are cast out mm -hmm. thank you so i i just love the fact that Christ is putting his work, he, all he can, you know, he's putting it. Christ will cross the oceans for us. That one is for sure. Mm. <laughs> you know, we keep telling people, I'll be there for you, I'll stand with you. But we are humans and we sit down sometimes, you know. But Christ does not sit down. Christ has made provision for our salvation. That is why you'll hear missionaries coming from very far. I know we've attended missions. You know, the times you've gone to Turkana, is that not Christ making provision for others? You know, so if such things have happened, like Christ is justified to demand for his good fruit, right? Yeah. So I am just closing this study because it's been a wonderful one. Um, a moment of destiny. And I'll just ask that my panel, we just do like one minute um, parting words, a moment of destiny, starting with you, Raphael. Mm, I think uh, <coughs> uh, it's been a wonderful study. Mm. And uh, uh, maybe to borrow from uh, thoughts that crossed uh, my mind uh, as uh, we were discussing, mm. perhaps somebody, a viewer, who is afraid of meeting uh, his past, you know, you are wondering um, if people see me the way God has seen me. Mm -hmm. If people see my field, if people see the things and, and I've done, the places I've been. And you feel like you'll be ashamed. The Bible tells us in the book of uh, uh, Mika, uh, I think it's Mika 7 uh, and verse uh, 19, that he will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities. And thou wilt cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Mm. And so we can face the judgment with boldness. If only we have, uh, we, make, uh, we, make, we make amends mm. and we, 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 we hold the hand that has been stretched out, the hand of God. Mm. Romans 8 and verse 1, he says um, that uh, if we have uh, communion with him, then we, we, we need not fear. Mm. Maybe, let me find uh, the text for you. That generally, we don't really need to have uh, um, to be afraid. Therefore, there is now no condemnation mm. for those who are in Christ, in Christ Jesus. Jesus. There is no condemnation. Mm. And so, don't be fearful uh, of meeting your past record. And uh, as I said, they've said uh, he cast them into the, mm. into, the, into the sea. I don't know whether that means that the records will be sealed when people <laughs> come and ask, hey, 
uh, so and so, the bulb just they just be shown the, the turning point. They mm. not be shown the the the, the dramatic bits. <laughs> you know, those, those 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 aspects will not be there. But they yeah. be shown. This man gave his life uh, for the thief on the cross. It will be that moment on the cross. Yes. You know, and so uh, we can't face uh, the future with confidence. We can't face uh, the judgment with confidence, knowing mm. that one. Uh, the victory belongs to the Son of Man, who is one of our own, mm. and, uh, and 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 He loves us, and there is no condemnation for those of us who are in Christ Jesus. Thank you. Yeah, Japheth. Oh, yes, for me, uh, uh, it's that element of uh, let us not have any fear. Amen. Uh, we mm. understand a hundred percent that mm. there is a choice to be made, mm -hmm. and we understand a hundred percent this choice is for time and for eternity. Mm. It is a choice that is uh, it, so. It it appears like a choice that should invoke a lot of fear. Mm. You know, like let's say you know um, if you're going to buy anything, for instance, you know there's some small fear because you have no idea. Maybe these days the standards have gone down. Mm. You know because maybe people are trying to steal all the time. You have no idea what will happen. You you've purchased something or you've gone to a place and then you've, you've used your money and then uh, you're fearful. There's a small fear because you have no idea if, if I made the right decision or not. But in this case, uh, it's because we know that our forerunner, Jesus Christ, our elder brother and a close friend of ours mm. who was like us mm. has overcome. Amen. And he has promised and he continues to fulfill that promise by giving us this power for day by day victory. Mm. And that he promised that ultimately we will receive a, 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 a victor's crown because of that of walking with him throughout this long journey. Then we can just walk faithfully with a lot of faith and with a lot of comfort. Mm. Knowing that as long as I am in, in Christ, as long as I am walking with Jesus, I am okay. Amen. And I am assured. Amen. We have no fear. Uh, that destiny uh, is actually a, a destiny of joy and bliss, mm. and not a destiny that is of confusion. Mm. Thank you, Jess. What's your, what are your parting shots? I think we should, as he, he said, all heaven is on our side. Mm -hmm. And let's be bold to make the right choice for Christ. I think I would encourage anyone who wants to make a decision today or who's been... Um, contemplating of living a, a, a sin that they have been trifling with or they have been cherishing within their hearts. Now, the Bible says, is the time of salvation. Today is the day you make that choice. Do not delay to tomorrow. Tomorrow is difficult. There is no tomorrow. Tomorrow is difficult to make that choice. Make it now while the Spirit of God is still convicting you. Tomorrow it will be harder to hear Him. Mm. So today is the day of salvation. Mm. Now is the time of salvation. Mm. Make the decision now. Mm. Do not delay the mm. choice of salvation. Thank you. It's like uh, we've all agreed that uh, we need to make a choice. A moment of destiny is here. And it's not like it's very far. It's here. It's now. It's today. Like just says, today day is the day you make it's now that you make that decision through the study i don't know what are your thoughts um and i'm looking at revelation in a new angle we know when we look at revelation 14 we are always concentrating on the 144 and we want to to really express if it is the literal meaning or is it symbolic but we forget the part where revelation 14 14 where it says that Trust the sickle. The harvest of the earth is ripe. We forget that. And we really need to put our mind into that. And that is what leads us to the moment where we make the right decision. And then it leads us to the 144. It is not the other way around where we really stick on the 144 and forget that we actually need to do what? Make a decision. What it, will it profit a man that you gain everything and lose your soul? Mm -hmm. That is the question I'm leaving us with. And I'll ask that, uh, Raphael, please call, close for us with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Our kind of loving Father and Master, what in heaven, uh, through Christ, our Lord and our Savior, dear Lord, we ask and pray that may our destiny end up with us being reunited, dear Lord. As the hymn writer says, face to face with Christ our Savior, face to face to see and to be known. Dear Lord, may you enable us to make decisions not to be dead by fear, but to look uh, with faithfulness and, and with, with a longing heart to be able to see our Lord and our Savior coming down in the skies and uh, with a crown on his head. And as Paul says, with the trump and the shout of the archangel, dear Lord, that we, together with the rest of the redeemed of all the ages, may be caught up together with him in the sky. May this be our destiny. Make this our experience. Our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.